deal from the first one that that was going to be the move to the plate? Yeah, I just uh, making sure I didn't telegraph it. I knew that my left inside leg kick was faster than his than, you know, overhand or the uppercut. So even if he saw it coming, if he wanted to try to beat me, the only way to beat me was a straight right hand. Boy, does it go a straight right hand. Uh, you know, he does a couple things really freaking well. You know what I mean? The overhand right, his uppercut, his cage work, and the takedown that he got in the last 15 seconds. But uh, Roy's like a black belt level of those moves. But he doesn't do anything else. He hasn't adapted his game. I mean, I have a bigger toolbox. And the only thing that I knew that was going to be an issue with it was, you know, a lot of times some of the more martial arts oriented moves, Thai boxing, Kimbo, the inside leg kicks, are not as entertaining to the fans. They're not educated to the sport. They want to see the haymaker land. They want to see two guys box some soccer robots. So that's why I prefaced the fight when I first signed it, knowing that, like, hey, Fighting a lot like Mirko Krokop without giving away the game plan was really the game plan to beat Roy. Move to your left, you know, uh, makes it to the angle of the right hand is too hard to hit. Uh, and then once I settle, it's loading my straight left, straight left, right uppercut, straight left, right jab. You know, uh, Carl Prince and I, with this main combination, I actually threw less hands than I wanted to. There's going to be a lot more lefts, rights, reverse, almost kind of like throwing a one two from an orthodox position to stand in southpaw. But he never adapted to the, I thought for sure he would adapt quicker to the inside leg kick. I knew the first round I'd beat him up, but like, oh, in the second round, he's gonna grab it for a single. You know what I mean? He's gonna take it, drop down onto it real hard, and I'm gonna have to fight him off. And uh, he never once did it. In fact, actually, my father was calling for what we call the pitch, but he called it the over, he, and all I heard was go over the top, over the top. And he meant for me to throw the inside left kick and then come down with the right hard shot, chopping elbow. But I, to my own, uh, uh, I was overly cautious about his single. I'm like, okay, after 15 minutes of this shit, he's gonna grab my leg eventually, right? That's Roy for you. Well, on the broadcast, Chael Sonda made some comments, I don't know if you heard them, that said Francis Ngannou injured Roy Nelson's leg in training, and that there were rumors out there, and that Roy was concerned that they would get out. Is there any comment that you have on that? Did you hear anything about that before the play? Well, if it was injured and he took that many leg kicks, holy cow, man, that guy wins the Iron Leg Award. Uh, uh, you hear all kinds of things in camps, back and forth, and uh, someone told me that, and I was like, eh, I'm not falling for that. And then especially when they said it was his right leg, I think is what I heard was injured. So then I was like, well, that's not going to help me out. I'm a southpaw. How am I going to get to his right leg? There is a kick that I can do that does that. If you watch our first fight, it's a running roundhouse. When you step forward with the leg, you're going to kick. Then you step forward with your pivot leg, and then you chop across. Very dangerous kick to throw. Rob Kingman was good at it. Andy Hook uh, was good at it. Um, but you put yourself right in line with that right hand. So to be honest with you, I thought that was, was very strategic on their part to convince me to try to kick his right leg to line me up for the right hand. So uh, I was like, eh, it's too hard of a shot to hit. Um, and if I had thought that his leg was really injured, I probably would have wrestled him more. There's a one head inside single, pick him up on the leg and dance him around a little bit. Um, that would have tested it out. As you can see, I never once went for it. I chopped out the left leg because uh, that's his lead leg. And that's, as you're throwing power punches, you have to be able to transfer your energy from the back to the front. And that's just me breaking down systematically what the structure it takes to throw a punch. Well, if I take one of those components out, the back component's too far away, it's dangerous to go for. The lead component was the easiest. Frank, you got cornered by your daughter for the second time. This is the first time you won in front of her yeah. as a corner, as a corner man, or a corner woman, I should say. That's a moment that very few people will ever have as a father. What does that mean to you? my ego is unsatisfied, but being an example to my children, trying to show them the way to be and how to deal with adversity, 
how to handle being on a four fight losing streak, being told you're going to be cut afterwards and maybe, you know, change their lifestyle financially. Uh, I just want to try to be an example to them, not for them to attain, but them to go over the top of Because my kids are better than I am. They really are. But I, a lot of parents might say that, but I know that. My kids are, uh, I think I said this in my last fight, I really thought that I was something special in life. I realize I'm just a footnote in their story, honestly. Frank, uh, first congratulations on the win. And if I'm sounding crew, I don't mean to. Uh, this, is a, this is a brutal sport. We've seen, it's like boxing. People die in this sport. People get seriously hurt. You've seen what's been going on, I'm guessing, the past couple months. Guys taking beatings. Guys in boxing die. You have money. You have a hat. You have, you're still married. You're ahead of the game. You have your health. You have your kids. Why do this? I mean, why not just retire from the sunset, do a TV show, do acting, anything that doesn't involve getting every day, six days a week, pushing yourself, getting beaten up, Going to doctors, getting your you know your back hair or any of the joint real line, and going, all right, let's do a fight, 15 minutes with the guy who wants to take my head off. Like, what makes you keep doing this over and over and over again? The other day, I <laughs> wow. uh, the other day my wife told me she walked into my son's room uh, cage and uh, she caught him watching old fights of mine. Well, that's why I fight too. You know what I mean, like. I think a lot of fathers want their sons and daughters to look up to them, admire them. I'm in a position where I can control that, you know. Uh, my days have come to an end where I don't get to do this anymore. My kids don't get to be in my corner. They don't get to see me get up and train and, and watch me in pain and see how I deal with it. It'll be their day, you know. Uh, and so I'm just trying to prolong that as long as possible. I get to be my kid's hero. I hope I haven't given that up. I mean, I guess, do you worry that There'll come a day where this all, you know, you have to pay the piper. All of a sudden, maybe <laughs> head injuries, you know, neurological. We know more about now than we did 15 yeah. years ago. Do you worry that this, all this toll might take effect? And all the next thing you know, it's you're no. like some of these NFL players. Uh, the, the, the one reason why I don't tear 